Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss some more information regarding Inazuma. And now this information is a bit late, for, but for those of you who have not been following uh, Genshin Impact's official Twitter account, Facebook, uh, Discord, anything like that, I will be your source of information. If you guys do find this video helpful or informative, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing if you want to catch more uploads like these in the future. So the first thing I want to talk about is on this PlayStation blog, which was written by the studio technical director at MiHoYo. And this blog was posted on July 9th, 2021, and it is uh, July 16th. So yes, I'm like a week late on uploading this, but they talk about, they talk more in depth on uh, Inazuma and what you can expect and stuff like that. Some new screenshots that we haven't even seen uh, that was posted by the, uh, or from the official um, this or Twitter account. So some new screenshots right here. I will be leaving all this in the description as well. If you guys want to take a glance and save any of this yourselves as well. But there is one major thing that uh, stood out to me. It says the Inazuma area consists of six main islands and a series of islets scattered around the ocean, each with a unique landscape and history. But that's not all. Because it says... With version 2.0, we're only releasing three of the six main islands of Inazuma. So tell me, what do you guys think about that? They're not giving us the entirety of Inazuma. They're giving us half of it. And then I assume with every single update that comes out, like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, it'll be one more island, one more island, one more island. And then at the end of 2.3, we'll finally have everything. Some closure with like story quests, Archon quests, whatever, Bow, you name it. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about that. Do you guys think that's a good idea? Them releasing the islands for Inazuma in parts like this, or, or would you have preferred them to release the entirety of Inazuma uh, all at once, all six main islands? For me, I want to give my quick feedback. Uh, I was a little surprised when I saw this, but it was expected, right? It was expected. I feel like MiHoYo is trying to pace this gradually, and they're not trying to make us burn through all the content at once, and then we have nothing to look forward to besides more banners and more quests and more events, kind of like how it's been from 1.0, the start of Genshin Impact, all the way up until now, right? We really haven't had a new region since like Dragon Spine, and we all know how we loved enjoying and exploring that. We also had the Golden Ar Apple Archipelago, which was very refreshing. Um, but I kind of don't mind this, you know? I don't know. I kind of don't mind this. Three islands out of the six gives us time to explore the uh, the islands that we do have. But I do wonder how big these islands are going to be. You know what I mean? I'm wondering if these islands are going to be kind of like uh, the Golden Apple Archipelago. That kind of size? Or if it's going to be on a much larger scale. Because we're getting three of the six. I'm hoping it's going to be on a much larger scale. Let me know down below what you guys think as well. Um, we also have some new living beings here. Uh, I think that's a Tanuki and something else like a heart. A little close up on the uh, the new Samurais that'll be fighting against us, as well as the Mirror Maiden. I guess this is going to be the what the Hydro Sisson Mage or something we can call it, right? And then the Pyro Reg is fine and stuff like that. New chapter. We have a new screenshot of uh, Ayaka standing with those Catherine in the background. Uh, food stall, it seems like, etc. Some cherry blossoms, beautiful. We got Yoi Mia with a sparkler. Uh, I see a treasure chest back there. Can't really make too much out of this picture. A floating island, it seems, up there. Yeah, I see a tree up there or something. And then we have Sayu. Sayu. I think that's a statue of the seven in the background. I, I don't know what little kid is doing up there on the roof, but okay. Yeah, neat little screenshots. I'll leave all this down in the description for any of you guys who do want to take part, or not take part, but just uh, read over this yourself as well. Also, the day-night cycle in Inazuma. It still looks beautiful. Even at night. Damn. I feel like the cherry blossoms really stand out at night, right? I can't wait. Jeez, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Um, But on top of that... I also wanted to quickly jump into the Inazuma 
Diaries Volume 3. I did release Volume 1 and 2 on my YouTube. Uh, I think it was the recent video before this one. Do, do note that this does contain spoilers. I just want to say that right now. I think Chapter 2 or Volume 2 was talking about the puzzles. Volume 3 was more so like more environment stuff. And Volume 3 or Volume 1, my bad. Volume 3 is going to be new monsters in Inazuma. So if you guys don't want to see new monsters, probably their attack patterns and stuff like that. I would advise clicking away right now. But let's go over the Inazuma Diaries, new enemies. Uh, hello Travelers, let's take a look at Inazuma's new monsters in the latest issue. This is going to be my first time taking a look at this as well. So we have the Pyro Hypostasis. There's a new Hypostasis in Kanazuka, the Pyro Hypostasis. The burnt trees and grass surrounding the Pyro Hypostasis are a pyro oh, oh, byproduct of its uh, bad temper. The Pyro Hypostasis has two states, ignited and extinguished. In the ignited state, the pyrohypostasis core is not exposed and is continuously regenerating energy or HP. Okay. After only after extinguishing it with the right elemental reactions will you have an opportunity to strike. In this extinguished state, the pyrohypostasis will attempt to reignite by creating a fire seed. And then some little close-ups right here of the um the gameplay being shown off. It's like a, uh, a snake, right? A serpent, like, shooting fireballs at you. I love how they're showing off Amber in this fight, right? Because, hey, look, let's be honest. I don't think many people are going to be using Amber after Yo and Mia comes out, you know? <laughs> so I like how Amber is here. Looks pretty cool. In the extinguished state, the Pyrohypostasis will attempt to reignite by creating a fire seed. Fire seed. Oh, that's what it is? Really? Wait, is that actually it? Oh, snap. I thought that was an entirely different enemy. Okay, a little close-up right there. Fucking blasting off. I like how it did 420 damage right there for a pyro hypostasis. Uh, 420 on the last one. Okay, mihoyo. And then this one, it seems like some bombs are on the ground about to go off. Oh, no, they're, like, transforming. What the fuck? It's like the Oceanid or something, right? Creating, like, little minions or something to fight for you. Interesting. All right. Floating and on the ground. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of the hypostasis, yeah? Or, or oceanid, rather, with the hydro mimics. In Narukami Island, there are some large cubes that resembles... Oh, wait, no. This is completely different. This is completely different. What am I talking about? Um... Uh, in Narukami Island, <laughs> there are some large cubes that resemble a hypostasis. This creature is known as the Perpetual Mechanical Array. That is what we're looking at, okay? That's what we're looking at. I was wondering why, because this right here is attached to the very bottom, and I'm thinking like, wait a minute, this is a hypostasis? That doesn't look like one, right? It should have been connected to the very top, yeah? Um, and then it says if you want to challenge the Perpetual Mechanical Array, you'll have to figure out where to find it first. The Perpetual Mechanical Array consists of several parts, and it can adapt to its environment and circumstances by transforming into different forms and using all sorts of attack methods. Be careful while facing this tricky new opponent. Okay. And then we got the Nobushu. Wait, the Nobushi. The Nobushi. Seems like they're just lurking, chilling, hanging out, practicing. Okay. Samurai who, are, who have fallen into banditry. Though they are uh, often collectively called the Nobushi, they do have a centralized organization. Among the Nobushi, the Nobushi Tsukubin. And uh, Nubushi Jintobin, I'm probably butchering these, I apologize, are the most adept at swordsmanship. The Nobushi Itsuke Ban also utilizes an elemental salt petter powder attack. Sometimes they even collude with the treasure hoarders or Fatui out of a greed for wealth or simply to survive. Interesting. Okay, that kind of reminds me of like some kind of move in like Sekiro or something, if any of you guys have played that, where you take a step back and like stun the enemy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to know what I'm talking about right there, but all right. Okay. Um, and then we have the Jintoban right here. See a Hydro Slime in the background. This guy is more like straightforward Oonga Boonga up in your face kind of thing. Nothing special is what I can see so far. And then finally, we have the Kikoban. It'll definitely use crossbows to ambush opponents. Looks like that's a double shot, right? One and then another one, two, three. Three shots. 
Okay, kind of like just a hilly troll sniper or something. Seems simple enough for one of the, the two E gunslingers. Uh, and I think that was it. I think that was it. Unless there's more that I can't actually load right here. Nope. That was it. Just refreshed. There's nothing down there. Alright, so that was everything. Inazuma Diaries Volume 3. New enemies and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys are most excited, or what you guys are most excited for, etc. If you guys just want to get in and make some wishes on Ayaka and Yoimiya, you don't really care for these characters or enemies. Uh, it is funny that they showed off Amber in all of these, though. Props to Mihoyo, I suppose, giving Amber some spotlight. But what about Jin Yen? Come on. Jin Yen needs some spotlight as well. Uh, and also, let me know what you guys think down below about Inazuma only releasing half of the islands. Only half of Inazuma being released. Let me know what you guys think about that as well. Hope you found this video helpful or informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm in terms of showing this video to other people and helping the channel grow. And consider subscribing as well if you want to catch more uploads. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.